Hello, my name is David and this is the first of many lore videos I plan on making covering my Soria animated series. I'm just going to warn you all right now though, things are going to get real dorky, real quick. Soria is a brutal, primordial, dark fantasy world. It's full of dangerous prehistoric wildlife, accursed cultists, pirates, bandits, and numerous warring factions. Survival is the only real goal of most of Soria's inhabitants. In this video, I'll be going over the backstory and lore behind one of the most infamous factions of Soria, the Kindred of the Tusk a quasi-religious clan of barbarians, bandits, thieves, and pirates. The Kindred of the Tusk clan was formed by the Desert Saurians. These guys. There are two subspecies of this race, a smaller, more cunning species, and a larger, rarer, more ancient species. The Desert Saurians evolved here, in the desert. This gigantic circle, this, this crater, is called the Solaris Sands, the Solaris Desert, the endless sands of Solaris, any of that. Solus in Solaris meaning sun, or of the sun. Which is where the Desert Saurians get their proper name too, the Soli Saurians. These particular Saurians also live very long lives, likely due to their more reptilian metabolisms. Most, if not all, Desert Saurians die young in combat, so their maximum age is unknown. However, one particular example of the larger morph, War Chieftain Torox, is very old rumoured to be a staggering 200 years of age. Long before the Kindred of the Tusk clan had been formed, the Solisaurians were essentially trapped in the heart of the Solaris Sands, and for the longest time they didn't even know there was anything beyond the desert. This desert is huge, and almost completely inhospitable. It's lifeless, except for the very centre. Being essentially a huge bowl, the only water in the Solaris Sands gathers in the very middle. Only the centre of this crater is life-supporting, and this is where the Desert Saurians evolved, and this is where the Desert Saurians had to stay. This barrier, this ring of death around their home was a boundary uncrossable by the simple people that the Desert Saurians were. I mean, that's assuming that they could even imagine the possibility that there was something else on the other side to begin with. This race, trapped, spent thousands and thousands of years raging wars with one another for the few precious water sources there were. A violent war culture grew, the race splintered off into multiple different family houses, and only the strongest were able to survive. Water became the only thing of value to these people. Their whole world was water, war, and endless sand. Pillaging, infighting, war, the race fought themselves to near extinction. On the brink of self-destruction, when their numbers totaled less than 100 from just a handful of remaining families, for the first time ever, a stranger came to their desert. He was a desert saurian unlike any other. He was huge, he was ancient, and bore long, heavy tusks. This wise and peaceful stranger came to the desert with knowledge of other lands, other people, and riches beyond the imaginations of the simple and isolated desert Saurians. He brought a fortune of water with him from the outside world, 
unified what was left of his kind, and finally led them out of the desert. This is how the Kindred of the Tusk clan was born, named so after the example set by their old tusked messiah. This messiah Tuskox has become a highly important cultural figure to the race, and his story has become their, their religion, their legend. The Desert Saurians have since bounced back from near extinction and are thriving. They've expanded from their desert habitat and are now present pretty much all across Soria. They have, however, kept to their brutal nature and are pretty universally feared by every other faction of Soria. Though seemingly lawless, the Kindred of the Tusk do live by one unbreakable rule. A rule put in place by their tusked messiah himself in their time of near self-extinction. No killing your own. To these criminal, barbaric, savage Saurians, breaking this one near holy rule is the only true, unforgivable sin. As the Blue Song Empire started to expand into the wilds of Soria, the Kindred of the Tusk have become the biggest obstacle in their path. This quasi-religious group of bandits and pirates is obviously in, in strict opposition to the imperialistic expansion of the, of the physically weaker Avisaurians, and the Tusk Kindred have managed to band together into a pseudo-resistance military surprisingly quickly and effectively to stop them. The Kindred of the Tusk were feared by almost all other factions of Soria. These are pillagers and barbarians after all. But in this time of war, many have started to see them as, as heroes as they fight to keep Soria wild against the ever-expanding rule of the Blue Song. Torox is one of the seven Kindred of the Tusk war chieftains, and easily the most infamous of the bunch. Stories of his savage conquest against the Blue Song have spread so rapidly across the land of Soria that he has basically become the figurehead of the clan. When he is not fighting, Torox spends his time breeding Carnotaurus for the kindred to use as war beasts. He is particularly fond of his oldest and most impressive specimen, nicknamed the Bull. The pair have such a strong and long-lasting bond that many have speculated that the two were born together, grew up together, like siblings. Which, if true, would make the bull over 200 years old. The bull was recently slain by the Blue Song, by the half-blind Captain Ornithocera. This devastated Torox. With his brother's blood still fresh on his chest, on his person, the vengeful war chieftain willingly marched into the Blue Song Embassy. He was captured and sentenced to death in their arena. The Blue Song are very prideful creatures with very strict rules. They refuse to accept that this lesser, bestial Saurian can outmatch their might in any conceivable way. Torox knows this. <laughs> Eager to prove that they are stronger than even the mightiest the Kindred of the Tusk has to offer, the Blue Song pit general after general, warlord after warlord, the greatest they have against Torox. A fair fight every single time. But 
Foe after foe falls to the might of the infamous and vengeful War Chieftain. Torox's path could be one of self-destruction. It's a big gamble, and he will likely eventually die if he stays in the arena. But for now, he is slowly reaping his vengeance, thinning the Blue Song's ranks, humiliating them in their very home, one victory at a time, all in the name of his fallen brother, the Bull. <laughs> And that's it. That's pretty much all I have written down about the Kindred of the Tusk so far. It might seem like a lot for just a couple of animated short films, but what can I say? I kind I kind of get really carried away with this this world building stuff. Anyway, if you'd like to read the full sketchbook I've been showing off in this video and scour my notes yourself for anything I may have missed, the full sketchbook is available right now on my Patreon page. Please consider supporting this series and giving it a read if you want. In the meantime, super special thanks to all my top Patreon supporters on screen right now. Without these guys, I would not be able to do... but well, I wouldn't be able to do any of this. I wouldn't be able to do what I do. Thanks again. Bye guys. <laughs>